Double legal tonight. What is good? Missed the front of the what there. Jesus, you're a professional. Turn your microphone on. Let's go. We're fired up. I turn it off at the end of the other one. You don't have to. All right. Well, here we go. What so, are we doing? We just finished up a little chat about, you know, dumpster fires and rocket ship risers or to the moon or, you know, some awesome statement. Um, <laughs> so now we got gonna, you to click on it, though. Now we're going to hit you with, you know, some veteran running backs that were some draft dodgers, some draft dodgers, some veterans who really uh, survived the draft here. Uh, so and the, maybe, did, maybe didn't. Or maybe some loser. Some the some some draft dodgers uh, went up to Canada for some French fries and gravy during the draft. Uh, so, you know, we'll play a little fortunate son, and uh, we'll get this thing uh, rolling here. So, you know, Tony Pollard, big winner, uh, of course. You know, they they really only bring in. Uh, Deuce Vaughn. And, uh, you know, caveat that Leonard Fournette, Kareem Hunt, Zeke, guys are still out there, probably going to crush somebody's dreams here. And, and Pollard certainly could get uh, Zeke, but I think Pollard seems pretty safe in general. Uh, real chance at a good RB1 season here if he can be healthy coming into the offseason. What round did he go in the NFL draft? In the, in the fourth. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 end, we'll end with a little bit of that okay, chat there. Okay, just uh, Dobbins. Eating. I mean, shadowing. Dobbins really, uh, really surviving there and could be a nice RB1 for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, finally well, healthy. Lamar Jackson, big wiener big, from this NFL draft as well. For sure. And then Ramondre Stevenson. Oh, huge wiener. Huge. I was, I was a little worried. Yeah. I was a little worried. But yeah. we survived. Um, we're excited. Wow, you were you were trying to say like you were feeling a little nervous about it. You've been That's like the I'm biggest saying. Ramondre dude since he got drafted. Uh, I feel like, yeah. and also in the fourth round. Um, oh, was he? Uh, yeah. Was he dead to you? No. Once that happened, negative. What are uh, you doing? Still took him in the second round. How? Um, why? But he survives. I thought maybe we might get a little Bijan. Atlanta takes Bijan. That was great. There, a lot of people were Thank mocking Bijan to the Patriots. Yeah. Um. So Stevenson. Really survives. Got an outstanding chance at an RB one season here. Yeah. Um, so regardless of any of those guys they bring in, I think, and uh, you know, if they could, you know, another big mover for me, Najee Harris. They went out traded up for for a lineman. They made some lineman adjustments in the off season. They brought in a couple. They brought in a swing and one of the Eagles. I'm drawing a blank on his name. And so and their their old line was actually really playing pretty well at the end of the season, kind of gelling. So they bring in some more good players. Address that. Glad they didn't take Zay and they addressed the, the line, giving Kenny Pickett some some time. And if if Harris, Harris unfortunately got hurt at the end of coming into last season, but or coming into the beginning of, of last season, but at the end of the season, Harris looked all the way the fuck back and he was playing like it and nothing comes in there except for Jalen Warren. And I like Jalen Warren. He's he, he's going to have his role on this offense, but make no mistake about it. There isn't that many bell cows left and Najee is for sure going to be a bell cow. And I could see Najee just being a very solid RB1 for the next three years for you. I know nobody wants to hear that because they think he stinks, but... I think he's going to dominate some carries um, and uh, really crush for you here. Uh, yeah, nobody wants to hear Najee Harris skyrocketing up in value. No. Nobody likes that, dude. No, but, uh, yeah, I mean, but Jalen Warren's so good, that's why. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think he is. I, I'm not trying to take anything away from Jalen Warren. I think he's a fine player. But make no mistake about it, Harris is going to be one of the, the – if he's healthy, going to have be jockeying for a position of you know, probably, you know – more carries than most RBs. Um, and then, you know, you saw at the end of the year starting to come around on the catches and, and Kenny P kind of coming around a little bit on, uh, on Nashi, um, you know, Miles Sanders, another big winner, uh, from, from this draft here, Carolina basically adds nobody. Uh, he's got the likes of Chuba and I'm drawing a blank on, on who else they have, uh, there in, in Carolina. Uh, but Sanders, uh, huge winner this draft cycle here and and all <clears throat> all we've heard and seen from his rb coach who who was there i believe in philadelphia is this guy's a three down back and uh i believe it's deuce staley they don't no one on here really right it's like miles sanders chuba hubbard raheem blackshear yeah Black. spencer brown uh, yeah so you know big big winner for miles so sanders. better i like, couldn't come up with a name Miles Sanders is is can be a leader in the clubhouse for big a big amount of carries and a decent amount of catches because the the, the 
the criminal amount of non catches that he had last year uh, was silly. Uh, now you get the running quarterback, and that does mitigate some some passing to the to the uh, running back there. But Miles Sanders, huge win right there for. Uh, your fantasy team and for running backs in general in your startup drafts you know it was kind of odd that some of the teams that took running backs you know kind of kind of were teams that were okay on on running backs and then some of these other teams really just stayed away and are keeping a bell cow and really didn't even bring in anybody else so we'll see kind of what happens but then of course my guy Damian fucking Pierce yeah. baby let's fucking go just oh my god it feels so good it just yeah. feels so good when it hits your lips now I know they brought in Singletary. I like Singletary. I think Singletary is going to have a role. Uh, but I think Damian Pierce is leading this backfield. Also drafted in the fourth round, if you didn't know. Um, That's an awful lot of relevant seems, guys drafted seems, in the fourth. Seems wow. like it. Um, That's weird, right? Uh, yeah, seems like it. Uh, but Pierce, really, really, uh, really huge there. I, I, I love the guy. Uh, Algier did not survive, as we suspected. Um, but... I love it. And, and all those guys last year and leading up to the draft and, you know, anything can happen. You know, anything can happen. Um, I'm not I'm not arguing with the fact that, yes, in more cases than not, you should sell off a running back who comes on who's fourth rounder or later. But this is a game of outliers and you're supposed to be having fun. So you find some guys, you bet on them, you draft them and you hang on to them. Now, if you're playing for two thousand dollars a team in a league then sure maybe i guess if you want to try to sell every opportunity you can and but let's fucking be real most of y'all are not even coming close to that you might be playing for 100 150 from what i see out there especially these fantasy analysts who are telling you what to do how i see fucking orphan leagues for ten dollars with these fucking jamokes so let's just pump the brakes on what the hell they think of what you should do um what do you what who has time for a ten dollar? That's what I'm game, saying. You know? Like unless it's best ball, I ain't got time for that. But I love a nice ten dollar best ball. Yeah. Forget it. Uh but you know, we there's there, we could go on and on with a bunch of guys. Rashad White was a guy who I wasn't crazy about, who I thought might get replaced, and he didn't really. Uh they, they did Connor. bring in Sean Tucker. James Connor. Uh nice, nice little uh but James Cook and and uh Damian Harris really survived here. Um and you know, really nobody of note. And, you know, so I think Cook, who in this cycle, I, I'm i not down on the player. I'm just down on the way they use him. And they didn't bring anybody else in. So, you know, if you're down on the class, he could be a guy that, that you could go target and, and trade out of one of your rookie picks to try to acquire Cook for a second round pick. Um, not doing the first. No, no. God, no. Uh, but Har <laughs> Harris as well. And then Amid. Javante and P. Ryan. Uh, some confidence maybe in Javante a little bit there. And then P Ryan could absolutely smash this year. Uh, you know, handpicked by, by uh, Sean Payton there. Really an underrated pass catcher really has come on here late. And I think P Ryan, we were uh, just six just, years too early. Just, on just, P. A, Ryan. just a nice little guy who in your zero RB or your hero RB that could really get you through some troubled waters here. I really like what 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 we're seeing out of out of P Ryan, and I really like the landing spot here. Barkley, obviously, CMC, obviously, JT, pretty much obviously, Evan Hole, Eckler. You know, odd that they didn't bring in anybody yeah, with the contract situation. He definitely there. was a winner. So, I mean, what are they doing? You know, I don't know. The guy, I guess you're going to try to figure something out, um, or they think he's just such a good guy that he's going to play anyway. Um, and then. I think Ceh was it was a Clyde. Under, the, under the radar winner and Pacheco, Pacheco. obviously, uh, but Ceh really did start the season fairly strong last year and then kind of tapered off and got hurt. Nobody wants um, to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. But Ceh is is left for dead out there, and I think he'll be a nice little, you know, grab and and Pacheco maintained value. I I would have I told you to sell. He was very late, uh, and I still might be okay with selling, uh, but Pacheco owners really. Uh, th th those two guys could really play a huge role for you uh, down the stretch at, at any point pick. with injuries. Um, or seventh round pick. Uh, yeah, or maybe even undrafted seventh round, yeah. Oh, uh, J. Mike has other years up there. Seventh round pick, last running back drafted in the NFL draft yeah, 2022. Like you mentioned, Connor there, James Connor, uh, just – Really, just giving probably going to give you another workhorse season here. Wow, uh, it would seem just money found for uh, the last like three years. Now, 
not the worst move by them if they're going to kind of not be great this year and control the draft next year. Hey, we'll just bring these guys that we have back. Connor's good enough. Load it up again. I don't think he has much more on his deal. I think he's like one more year. But. Right. Uh, so, you know, really like a decent amount of, of RBs coming through here unscathed. And then, like I said, there could be a couple of guys who lose a little about Chubb and uh, uh, Ford out of Cincinnati last year. Jerome, Ford. Jerome Ford. Really uh, nice survival for those two. I mean, I didn't think Chubb was really in any danger. But your Ford picks from last year, you know, they, they've been seeming to be OK and like a little bit of a rotation. And, and Ford was a little banged up last year. They don't really have anybody else in there. They didn't really bring in anybody else. So that Ford... Uh, maybe they re-sign Hunt. Maybe, but I don't, it didn't seem like it. It seemed like there was a lot of negativity at the end of that uh, season there. And Mixon kind of slides in. I don't know exactly know what's going to happen. Same thing with Dalvin. Those guys are kind of a little, you know, they didn't really do anything. They, they did act, the, the, the Vikings had McBride, which love picking him up late. Uh, but, um, and Mixon, I don't really Chase know what's going to happen, but they did get Chase Brown, who I, who I really like. Uh, but, but those guys do kind of survive a little bit. If maybe both take a pay cut and stay where they are, probably the best case scenario for those guys um, to kind of survive um, and, and have their best case scenario of moving forward uh, with another decent contract after this. Like staying with those your respective teams right now, paying for a little less this year could gauge you an, a, another decent contract with somebody else. Uh, down the line here. So Rashad White, again, nice winner at the end of the list here. Yeah, obviously Josh Jacobs. And maybe even a little Zamir White stock for you. I don't know who else they have on that roster. Uh, but, you know, we liked, we liked Zamir uh, a decent amount last year. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, a backfield that kind of stayed intact. I did want to point out that, you know, a lot of these old running backs that we talked about them all right there, a lot of those guys kind of survived, uh, which, you know, for a while, anything that we posted with drafting older running backs that were in that 26, 27 year, even from last year or two years ago, even people telling you how dumb you were for taking any of these guys a little higher. And, you know, Chubb, Dalvin, Mixon. Now Mixon's a little bit of a bendejo, so we don't exactly know what's going to happen there. Stop breaking the wall, <laughs> CMC, Eckler, James Conner. Uh, and, you know, I think if Alvin Kamara didn't have some legal fucking troubles again, stop breaking the wall, asshole. Mm -hmm. He probably would also survive. Like he doesn't seem like he's not any good anymore. He's just a kind of a little bit of a dingus here. Um, and, and Aaron Jones, you know, all those guys kind of survive and had really fucking good seasons last year. Like, so, you know, from that chart that you want to show me every time from two years ago and last year about how 27 year olds fall off a cliff. Well, they didn't used to. And now maybe these guys aren't going to. And maybe you just had a, 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 a section there where shit got unlucky. You had your girlies and you had your David Johnsons and you had, you know, you had a bunch of unfortunate shit happen to some of these guys to end their career a little earlier. It used to be 30 and especially for the elites. And it should you would assume that with modern medicine and what we know about things that we should be there or at least a little even more. Derrick Henry could be good for two or three more years. He was awesome uh, when healthy, you know. He didn't necessarily, quote unquote, survive. They did bring a third round running back in, but I think he's going to be just fine this year as far as production uh, if he doesn't get traded with the with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, so, you know, all those older running backs, again, Chubb, Dalvin, Mixon, CMC, Eckler, AK, if he wasn't an idiot, Connor, um, you know, uh, Aaron Jones, all kind of survive. And, you know, you could even throw Barkley in there a little bit. I guess he's kind of, he's a little bit younger than all those guys, but you know, all kind of survive and seem to be on a path to score really relevant fantasy points last year. And I love to see it. I just love to see these fucking guys who are absolutely, there's no way we're wrong because look at this fucking chart and you were fucking wrong. And I hope it lasts for two or three more years. It'll just be awesome. It'll just be as good as Najee Harris being awesome for until he's 30. Um, so, you know, really, really enjoyed that. Um, and, you know, did you did you have more running backs you want to throw in there or more receivers or I, I'll, I'll throw a couple tight ends at you? If so, I think I think you covered all the running back winners that I had. I do have some losers. OK, if, if real quick, I could run through them. Obviously, Tyler Algier. Sure. Uh, Kenny three sticks. Got to consider extent, him a loser. Sure. Right. Sure. Got it. So but he'll just be a little cheaper now. Right. Kind of the mindset. How cheap does he go? Definitely still interested in the talent that's there. Swift was, but then he got traded to Philly. Now Swift's an interesting one because I, I almost think you should capitalize on this the move because Philly's a Fugazi landing spot. I again, I just now you bring him in, 
maybe you scheme up a little bit of stuff for him. The, the, the Lions had seemed to lose confidence in him. Injured, soft, doesn't do what they want him to do. Maybe not the best route runner. Didn't want executing things like they want him to execute things. Philly brings him in. Maybe Philly revamps him. He's a Philly guy. He's from Philly. Uh, you know, maybe he's a little bit more, you know, hey, they love me over here. They brought me in, yada, yada, yada. Either way, he's on a contract. I like Swift. He's a good player. Um, but it was, you know, Miles Sanders had chunks of time where he was good last year but it was just then it was just they did not throw it to their running they backs. don't throw that's it to the running swift backs that. and that's what swift kind of needs and it's like good luck figuring out you know if it's if it's gainwell or boston scott or rashad penny or or jalen hurts uh you know so i almost think you should capitalize on this on this potential upswing here and it's not because Find i'm a philly fan i like or just you know just somebody who thinks that this is a really good and maybe it will be i'm not I'm not saying that it won't be i I don't like to talk in apps. I don't have any charts that tell me. I mean, it's so uh, good there that, you know, he definitely could. Right. He could carve out a role. It could be awesome. Um, but, you know, I, I think went from a loser to maybe an OK winner, but definitely rebounded your fantasy team as a winner where you could maybe salvage some value here off off Swift where you thought maybe you might have to wait a year. Right. Yeah. So I thought I thought that was interesting. I had that written down. And then he got traded. Khalil Herbert. You know, a question mark whether that was good or bad. He, they, obviously, they were going to bring somebody in. You, you thought they were going to bring somebody in, and it just happened. It happened to be a fourth round running back. You know, it's not yeah. the worst. Yeah, but he's not the only guy there. Could have definitely been a big winner. And then uh, Et, because people are going to think that we talked about it a little bit on our first show when when we discussed Tank going there, and the people that hate Et that forgot how good he was for four straight years, they got tired of him being so good, and they found lateral agility or something to the site as why he wasn't going to be any good. And all he did was crush his rookie year, or I guess it's his second year, but technically it was his rookie year. I think to the public eye, he was a loser, but... I think I think you got to consider him a little bit of a loser, but that's kind of what they seemingly like they wanted to do. And I think they were always guys, trying to get somebody else involved. You know, I think those guys are good compliments and can coexist. It seems yeah. like, again, like we talked about with the Lions a few times over the past couple episodes and the last episode that we just did. You're thinking that offense is taking another step forward. Right. So you're thinking more points, more opportunities, better offense, staying on the field more. You know, I think I think. Tank and ET can can have a symbiotic relationship, if mm. you will, um, and you know it's of course it's gotta hurt. I think it's gotta hurt ET a little bit uh, to just not be the man all the time. Uh, but I don't know that we were ever necessarily. I wasn't necessarily expecting that, which is why I wasn't drafting him quite as high as maybe some people were. Um, but and maybe this will knock it down enough where it's I'm I'm still interested in the talent. I love ET. I think he's great. There were times, and I watched a lot of Jags games this year. E.T.'s my boy. Uh, there were times when, like, it's like, why don't y'all give this man the ball more? Yeah. Seemed like they're also, like, intentionally holding him back a little bit. But every time he would touch it, it was like a 10-yard run. It was like you could see, like, you just leave this souped-up engine charging, and then you let it off the charger, hit the NOS, and, you know, good yeah. things would happen for them. So maybe, you know, they may, they want to preserve him a little bit, utilize him in the past game. They they thought James Robinson could be the guy. They traded for Jermichael Hasty. He got run. You know, it just seems like they they were holding him back. They want to let they want to like keep him a little more fresh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh he's what like a fourth round startup pick at this point. I mean, uh, he was. was uh he's 34 overall, so that's into the third in uh, our through six six startup drafts that we did this off season. Um, although, nope, that's that's an average. So he was at the thirty six spot, so right at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth. I can see that moving down a little. Yeah, so maybe makes it a little more palpable, palatable, palatable. Jesus, I yeah. always fuck that palpable up. Palpable is uh, like a tangible. Uh, yeah, you could feel the energy was palpable. Yeah. Um, I can feel it <laughs> down in my plums. I think we're going to get a plum shirt together here. Okay? Yeah, we should definitely. <laughs> should we hit up like Chris Kemp or something? Or you, you got something in the works? Uh, I don't know. We'll uh, see. Just that guy, just his face, just Ashley Schaefer's face. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Is that copyrighted? Just, yeah, we gotta, I think we, got, I think we, we go gotta text. plums. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, so I got a couple sure. wide receiver wieners and w- like one loser. It's tough with the wide receivers, yeah, you know, because yeah, 
But I thought like I didn't bring any of them. Traylon in. Burks, sure, big one, sure. They didn't draft anybody of a skill position set for, from tight a end. receiving. Uh, but that was even a, what fourth is that? rounder, fourth round tight end, and a seventh round wide receiver. And they could have used another wide receiver. It's not like if they would have drafted a wide receiver that it would have crushed Burks. But the fact that they didn't draft any of them, it's like. Would you look at that? And they brought him in another quarterback. So yeah. uh, I thought he was a huge wiener. Yeah. Definitely agreed. has one. Agreed. We got offered the 1 8 for Burks. Turned it down. Turned it down. Um, Gabe Davis. Little little low key win. They did take Kincaid. I'd, I'd, I'd put, I'd put uh, Sha- Shakir in that winner. Shakir a little in more. The winner. <laughs> Just they they could have but definitely yes, taken yes. the top top wide receiver and that would have he would have been dead and now he's not so maybe you can maybe it's still a little window to get out think, of him I think so I, I mean he could shine you know he used to get three years out of a uh, he's know, got those before uh, you had to worry about a wide receiver he's got those Quentin Johnston hands though so <laughs> must not mean any good then uh, loser I couldn't find too many of them but Rashad Bateman for sure which we kind of knew that was going to happen a little happen. bit but I mean in a year it could be fucking Zay and Bateman just fucking rocking and rolling in an offense that everybody loves so you know <clears throat> I think it's a good buy like he he was already kind of a buy low or, or you might could find someone that was still a believer and get out for like equal value it was kind of one of my must sells before the draft because I thought someone was he was going to get not replaced, but then they signed Odell, and everybody seemed to act like that was the, his replacement. It's like this dude's <laughs> thirty with two eight torn ACLs. Like, Might even be thirty one. Settle down here, and then they go and draft. And they go do a thing like that. Yeah. Draft Zay Jones. Uh, I think. I think for sure, people's minds they got him uh, upset with that. So, um, Lamar Jackson, Geno Smith, Kirk Cousins, Desmond Ritter were my quarterback winners. They didn't get. Replaced. I had golf on there, and then the third round hit, and mm-hmm. was like, ah, it's still not the worst for golf, but yeah, uh, we kind of knew at some point it did seem they must really like Hooker, obviously. Um, yeah, but Lamar Jackson got a bunch of weapons. Geno Smith didn't get replaced, and got JSN and another running back. Kirk Cousins didn't get replaced by anyone. Yeah, you know, and got a wide receiver. I did take a quarterback, but nothing yeah, crazy. And then Desmond Ritter, you know, got, yeah. Got another weapon and, and then didn't get replaced. So, yeah. All right. Well, let me get some tight ends in here. Do it. Um, we'll start a little higher. We'll work lower. Uh, Dalton Schultz. They didn't bring anybody in. He's only on a one year deal, but they didn't bring anybody in. It's of, Houston, of, right? Yeah. So he could be a, a vacuum over there for targets. Uh, Najoku, you know, they brought in Seti Tillman, but no other, no tight ends. Uh, and they, they obviously brought in Elijah Moore. Uh, but, Again, no tight ends. Uh, so th- these guys, those guys were like a little higher end, later tight ends. And then from there, it's Jawan Johnson, where they didn't really traded bring it. They Troutman. traded away Troutman, which yeah. whatever. I don't give a fuck about Troutman at this point. Yeah. Um, but surprised they didn't package up uh, Taysom Hill, too, and send him over to Denver. Dear like, Sean, <laughs> yeah. here's your boys. Yeah, you fucked us with this one, pal. <laughs> yeah. he, was, he was like, oh, was a a, he's like, that's a bad deal. I got to get out of here. You <laughs> could hold that uh, yeah. Taysom Hill deal right yeah. there. So Josh... Uh, uh, ju- yeah, who am I looking for? Juwan Not Josh Johnson. Johnson. Jawan Johnson. Um, I think that was a decent winner there. Irv Smith, Cincy. No, uh, they did draft some wide receivers, but no. They no, went ham on the wide no receivers. No tight end. Didn't they? No tight end of note. Uh, oh no, no a fant. Uh, you know, no real tight ends of note over there. Kate Otten could be an opportunity to maybe get out of Kate Otten here if you wanted to. I didn't pay anything for him, but maybe he flourishes and maybe you get a Komet. I thought Komet again survived. Is Komet not dead to you? No. No. He caused the pie to the face. He did cause the pie to the face. It wasn't his fault. Justin Fields was a net sh- passing for. Should throw that video in here. Should throw it in the last one, too. Should use it over and over again. Um, Since he only took two wide receivers, I don't know why I was thinking that. And, and they then were, they were both late. So. McBride again survives and really, you know, not a lot of whole wide receiver. They, they did draft Wilson uh, in the third, I believe. But, you know, I think McBride, huge uh, for him. For Arizona there. And then Chig, sort of. They did draft a fourth round uh, tight end. Josh but, Wild. Uh, but, you know, Chig is, uh, I think, a nice little wiener uh, there. I don't know. Uh, there's never been any tight ends <laughs> under 6'3 that have been well, any so good. Well, it's only like 88, 15% or something like that. Jesus. Like, all right, man. What the fuck are we doing? All right. Fuck, get off Twitter. Yeah. 
<laughs> you All right. Stay off Twitter. I want to wrap this up. That's the best advice we could give on a Dynasty Fantasy Football show. Stay off Twitter. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up. You go all, what Twitter is good for is gauging temperatures uh, and seeing what everybody else is talking about and where values may be going or, or driven or which ones are falling. So I think that's a good thing with Twitter. Dumb you don't temperatures. Don't engage anything. But, um, that, but the Twitter doesn't have like, it doesn't have the pulse of your own league. Where people like well, running no, backs I mean, and like winning, it doesn't. It doesn't. And aren't always rebuilding, and in, every player has to be sold. In general, there's the big guys out there tweeting shit. So, like, if anybody else in your home league is re- like that, like those guys are the guys who move ADPs. So, yeah, you gotta, you should be on Twitter. You don't have to tweet and listen to anything, and you can curate who you listen to or who you see and don't see. But it is a good resource um, for fantasy football. Cesspool. Um, but I did want to wrap up with this. We're talking talking running backs, winners, losers. Um, and some of those winners, Pollard, Stevenson, we kind of mentioned, um, Aaron Jones, uh, Eckler. Um, you know, we, we can just start with those guys. Those guys were all winners basically kind of for us. And Eckler was a fourth or uh, Eckler was an undrafted free agent who was the best running back in the league last year. Uh, and maybe the year before. And maybe the year before. Pollard who could be an RB1 this year and for a stretch was awesome last year. Stevenson was a RB1 for big stretches of the season this year. Um, Could definitely have an awesome year this year. And Aaron Jones has been one of the better running backs in the league for a long time. Fifth round pick. Um, You know, so before I go any further with that, that's one, two, three, four, uh, Four guys right there. That's Throwing Damian Pierce, who and then, had an RB1 and then throw, season. And then he didn't have an RB1 season. He was on pace for one. He could have. An average. I mean, he just finished at RB2 level. But he could have, and there is potential to have an RB1 season. So that's, let me throw those guys in there. And I know you can say whatever you want to say and poke holes in this, but there's five players right there. that the, Five of those guys, all five of those guys, could easily be RB1s next season. Um, you know, Barkley and CMC and... And, uh, you know, who else am I missing here? Chubb and, you know, maybe Dalvin or Jacobs. You know, those guys could all factor in there, but there's still room for, you know, seven other guys to come in there and, and be, their, be their normal guys. JT, uh, Brees maybe, but he's, you know, going to be hurt for a portion of the season. Those guys are all drafted in the fourth round or later. Like, you guys make it fucking seem like there is no way in the world that any of these running backs who get drafted in the fourth round or later could ever be useful and should ever should always be immediately fucking traded, man. It's just bullshit. Like, fucking make decisions for yourself. Like, look, there's there was a bunch of dudes right there who are really fucking good at football. Could Pierce get replaced next year? Sure. He certainly could. Or he could establish himself as one of the best fucking running backs in the league on an ascending offense. And you guys wanted to trade him for any first in 2023. Well, now you, all those same people are probably the same people pounding the table about, this class is mid. This 23 class is mid. So, like, I would trade Pierce for a late first right now. I mean. All day. All fucking day. Like, like trade I would, a late first for to Pierce? To get Pierce? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. I'm yeah. down with that. Yeah. Algier, it didn't work out. The The difference for me between Pierce and Algier was a real simple watch. One guy looks fucking different. The other guy looks fine and is a good player, but I could see how it could be replaceable. But shit, Kenneth Walker just got replaced. Mm, you got I'm just too. saying, like, he just, his value just got crushed. Yeah. You had, you thought you had, he was a top three player dynasty running back coming into this offseason essentially yeah top five at worst and he gets replaced with second round capital i'm just saying like just don't get i know that all 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 the really fucking smart people want to just tell you how all these other guys are fucking dead they're not some of them may be you just got to find the path to least resistance and the ones that you like and did your research on that landed in decent spots and then you also have to pay attention to the offseason and kind of what's going on look Pacheco right there could carry you through, carried you through troubled waters through some of this season. He's a seventh round pick. Uh, Pirine could be a huge player in what you do this season. Fourth round pick. Um, let's see here. Elijah Mitchell, a fifth or sixth round pick. But if he sixth. wouldn't have been hurt, I'm sure he would be a player in what the fucking Niners do. And maybe they never trade for CMC if Elijah Mitchell is fucking really good. Now, if you could get CMC on a team like the Niners, you fucking do it. But Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, that's a six-round pick. And I was kind of telling you to trade him because the Niners are kind of, 
you know, wishy-washy at that position. But if he doesn't get hurt, you saw on the field last year when CMC and Mitchell was on the field, there was times when Mitchell looked better than CMC at just straight up running the football. Um, and then you have, you know, guys like Moster and Wilson who were undrafted free agents. And then you have guys this year who we talked about who kind of survived a little bit. Warren, an undrafted free agent who could be a nice handcuff for you. Spiller and Josh Kelly, fourth and fifth round picks. Could end up playing big roles for you with your Eckler. Uh, Pierre Strong, fourth round pick. Jerome Ford, fifth round pick. Those guys could all play big roles this year for you in, in, in uh, you know, big spots. So just fucking pump the brakes and don't get so bent out of shape about listening to these dudes who are telling you that it's they're, all these dudes are dead and they're must sells. This is fucking fantasy football, man. We're supposed to be having fun and enjoying things. And part of the process should be fun of finding these outliers. There are outliers all throughout this league that are some of the best players in the league. So don't just go throwing that out. I think it's I think it's really silly and it gets really overblown. And, you know, all the smart guys are going to tell you how people are doing mental gymnastics about how their favorite prospect got late draft capital and how they're still, you know, somebody that they're going to buy. Yeah, you're not buying them at the same spot you were buying them before, but you're still buying them. It's okay. You can still be okay and be into that guy. You don't have to fucking listen to Nate Liss out there who's telling you that your guy's dead. You don't have to listen to fucking Josh Larkey who's telling you that your guy's dead. They're not. There's Some of them will be, but some of them won't be. You don't have to listen to Scott Connor who tells you that Chig will never be good because he's under, uh, under a height and weight. Like it's it, There's the other guys on the list that are that 15% were fucking awesome players. Like... It's okay. If you like Chig, hang on to fucking Chig. And and like the reason that Chig has any steam right now, he doesn't even fucking cost you anything. It's not like he's a fifth round pick all of a sudden. He barely costs anything and this guy's targeting him like he stole his wife. Like, dude. Or at least fuck him. When, when when he's when he is on the field with the ball in his hands, that's why you're interested in Chig. It just it's fun. It looks different. Uh-huh. It's awesome. Like yeah. maybe it won't work out. As a rookie tight but end. But it was fucking awesome to watch, man. Yeah. So just again, like just just don't get like there are the thing is is there are plenty of fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round picks that aren't worth a shit. They, there are. And that's where these stats come from. I understand what analytics is doing. You're trying to make the best bet you can. But sometimes the best bet you can is this an, this outlier that you did your fucking work on and that you fucking believe in. That's part of what this is, you know? Like, it's just, that, that, that's part well, of the it game, It should man. be, and it isn't for everyone. And right. I I think, you know, we, uh, we've we been trying to dial back the, the shots that we take. And, and all those people, shots I just took, all those guys, those are guys that are very smart and are very good at playing this game. I just use their name because I know... What they say and and how they work. Um, there's no personal shots on those guys at all. I I want to know. I want to normalize the spreadsheets. You know, there's a disconnect between analytical people and film people because of the way sometimes both of them, to me, mostly analytical people act and the tone they take and the the demonstrative, staunch. I could never be wrong tone when that's not what this is. None of this is black and white. This is all very gray. This is eleven on eleven chess with some of the best freakishly sized athletic freaks that you that they're going against each other with some of the smartest minds in the in 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 the world like it's just it's the best sport and if you if you don't watch it I don't if you don't like watching football what are you doing but what what analytics did for football and fantasy football is made it a lot bigger because all these nerds think that now they can come in and figure out fantasy po- football and they can like be cool doing shit around football and they don't have to watch it or understand it or ever have played it or know anything about it. They can just look at their spreadsheets, which they're used to doing, and then all of a sudden. But you can't come in here like that's the end all be all. Right. You can't well, come in the, here like a staunch asshole. That's the problem with you know just a lot of these people who tell you to sell these picks and when that they're all dead and that trade all your draft picks because this draft class is mid and it's like dude. Well, again, on this last thing we we just. Fucking twenty guys into a fucking rookie mock, and you're you're like, damn, I like a lot of these guys still. It's a good it's a good deep class, man. Some of their values got nuked, but there's a lot of really good landing spots here. Like, yeah, I was a two six, and there was at least four or five players that I wasn't exactly sure who to take. Right, a day after the draft, because everyone wants to act like they know exactly what to do now, and, and, and you gotta many, start your stupid draft right now, the day after the draft or the Saturday when it ends. How many times have you heard guys settle being down, dead because of landing spots, and in a year or a six weeks or two fucking weeks into the season it's all like oh shit he's alive i should have never faded him 
you know, and, and sometimes it's warranted. But that's all I'm trying to say is that it, I think you put a good word. It's not all black and white. It's gray. And it doesn't need to be always there. There are I'm not saying that every fourth through sixth, seventh rounder are guys that you want on your team. I'm not. No, nah, but, uh, but we've been doing this for, for a what, decent okay. amount of time now. And we like to keep our third and fourth round picks. We use next year's picks to trade in or trade up a little bit to target a guy in these later rounds and we've built solid depth yeah. depth on our teams Pollard, you got Stevenson Amon Ross. and Amon Ross right. Brown were all guys that I fucking traded up and got in those rounds and took because I believed in the player yep and those are just recent guys I've missed on plenty of players too like I'm not trying to say I don't fucking miss I missed on I missed on Hakeem Butler I missed on fucking Isaiah Spiller and those jury's still out uh, but I adjusted Isaiah Spiller. I didn't say I'm just keeping him at the end of the first round or as RB4 or whatever. Right. I, I took him at the back half of the second or the early third. I'm fine with that. I'm going to do the same thing with Zach Evans this year. And maybe he misses, maybe he doesn't. But I'll trade in and get Evans. I'll trade in a guy like that. I'm that a guy that I like, like Evans or Spiller, 100 times out of 100. Because what if we're not doing that, what are we doing? Like, I, Garrett Wilson hits and you, you everybody's telling you to fucking trade him like what yeah. a rookie hit he just got an amazing hit like you want him to hit and, and got a ridiculous like, upgrading quarterback him? like okay if you get Justin Jefferson sure trade him but other than that like you just, this is the point you just hit you nailed it yeah and you probably got him for way cheaper than he did because it was a bad landing spot I know I got him for fucking stupid cheap everywhere I have him yeah like and it's just you know it, it's just I think it's I think it just gets too too uh, the way they speak very condescendingly and arrogantly, like there's no way that that could happen. And that, oh, well, I would just bet on outliers. It's like, no, I'm just betting on certain outliers. It's really the, the best I, I, can, right. I can tell you. Right, just certain outliers. Exactly. So, anyway, we get off our soapbox. Um, and again, I'm not taking personal shots at any of these dudes. I know that they work very hard. I know that they're very good at this. Uh, so, but it doesn't need to be that way. That's why I like JB so much. Right. I can have a conversation with JB. I could have a conversation with any of those guys if they were right in front of me. Uh, it's the Twitter thing that everybody, that we've done it a million times. You get those guys who talk that way, they come on the show, they're nothing like that yeah. because it's Twitter. And you get. But JB doesn't act that way on Twitter. You can either, have though. 30 minutes to have your rebuttal on Twitter and do some research. When it's when we're talking here to, you know, face to face, it's, it's what a bit you got? different, you know? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I just. I just find that that's one thing that really drains me about this. We're supposed to be having fun. Well, Matt Matt Kelly kind of set the tone for them boys. You know, he took the Stephen A. Smith. He took the Tucker Carlson route of saying things in such a way. Well, you notice that the analytical guys never come back and tell you what their misses were. You know, they never they're never like, oh, yeah, I was wrong. Well, no, they that. just find a new stat. Like why right. Nikhil Harry couldn't be any good. Right. So like, uh, you could have just watched. But. I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody. We 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 have plenty of misses, but we have uh, a decent track record of, of hitting on some some deeper. Just an approach, you know, in the tone. Right. Uh, so I'm not trying to bury anybody. You know, I hate this biggest losers. You know, like yeah, who's trash? It's so cool to hate these days. I hate it. I don't like the hate. I hate the hate. Yeah. Can we all just get along? Can we maybe find some silver lining? You don't have to you don't have to take the guy. Just move him down. You're saying you never take the guy, you know? Yeah. I mostly just hate the definitive statements is what kills me. Like, you know, I see a lot of dudes out there. There's uh maybe his name's like Christian Williamson or something. That guy's always coming with some definitive fucking statements. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he acts like a real dick on fucking Twitter. Like, like come on, man. Like they, they just see people before them being successful doing that. Yes. Yeah. You know? It's like Find a better so many absolutes. Model. Fucking the dude we had on, Rob fucking Quintoris. That dude talks like such a fucking asshole <laughs> on, on Twitter. Twitter. Like, dude, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, of, and he's a film guy. Yeah. And uh, well, it's, it, I don't want to just point it at analytical guys. There's a lot of it's just dudes. Yeah. It's dudes in general that are yeah. just uh, pricks. Females too. Pricks on Twitter. Oh, sure. Just pricks on Twitter because they think that's how you have to be. And it's just it's not. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's have some fun. We're excited that the drafts come and gone. Put and the F F F back in fun and fantasy. So we appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, comment. Five star review on the iTunes. Five dollar holiday on Patreon. Yeah, had a lot of fun this draft weekend. We just we didn't go live for the public, but we went and hung out with the patrons on the discords both nights and had a blast. Um, shout out to Big D. We're doing extra shows three a month. Bunch of startup mocks, rookie mocks, ADP, 
Just getting it in. Getting it in for your pleasure. Appreciate y'all. Peace.